And hi there, I'm Rebecca Weaver. We're going to be covering section 2.7 today, Applications of Derivatives to Business and Economics. Of course, that's what this class is all about, cost, revenue, and profit. All right, here's our example for cost and profit. A one product firm estimates that its daily total cost function in suitable units is c of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 13x plus 15, and its total revenue function is r of x equals 28x. Now we need to find the value of x that maximizes the daily profit. All right. So first step, to find the value of x that maximizes the daily profit, we must first have a profit equation. So a profit equation is just going to be revenue minus cost, obviously. So we take our revenue function minus our cost function and simplify it. We'll get that the profit equals negative x cubed plus 6x squared plus 15x minus 15. And the value of x for which we are seeking will be the one that corresponds to the highest point on the p of x graph for x greater than 0. So upon looking at the graph on the next page, it's going to appear that our maximum occurs, looks like somewhere around 5. All right. To determine the exact value of x for which p is maximized, well, we're going to find the value of x for which the derivative of profit equals 0. So here's our profit function. We're going to take the derivative. When we do, we find that the derivative equals negative 3x squared plus 12x plus 15. We'll set it equal to 0. We'll solve it for x. And we will get that x can either be negative 1 or 5. Well, x is not going to be negative 1 because that's not in the domain of our profit. So the solution would be x equals 5. Oh, and we're done. We kind of knew that from the graph, but we didn't know exactly. But now we know for sure exactly what it is using derivatives. So let's do a demand and revenue problem. A swimming club offers memberships at the rate of $200, provided that a minimum of 100 people join. Now for each member in excess of 100, the membership fee will be reduced $1 per person for each member. At most, 160 memberships will be sold. How many memberships should the club try to sell in order to maximize its revenue? Well, you know, we're trying to find the value of x that maximizes revenue, so we must first have a revenue function. In order to do this, we must first create a demand equation. So p equals f of x. Now, since we're guaranteed that at least 100 memberships will be sold, we don't have to worry about situations involving x less than 100. Furthermore, for each membership that is sold, the price of the membership falls by a dollar. In other words, as x increases one unit, y decreases one unit. Now, because of this continual reduction of price for up to 160 memberships, we know that when x equals 100 memberships, the price p equals $200 each. We also know that when x equals 100 plus 60 memberships, the price p equals 200 minus 60, which is $140. Thus, we have two points corresponding to the demand equation, 100 comma 200 for the first point, and 160 comma 140 for the second point. Using these two points, we're going to determine the slope of the demand equation. We're going to take the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. We'll get that that slope is negative 1. We're now going to use the point slope form of a line to determine the demand equation. So that's just the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Plugging these in and using one of our points, my favorite point is the 100, 200, so that's what we plug in. We're going to find that y equals negative x plus 300 is our simplified version of that demand equation. So now we have the demand equation f of x equals negative x plus 300, and we can determine the revenue function by using r of x equals x times b, which means that x is equal, I mean, which means that it equals x times f of x. 
So plugging those values in, we'll get that the revenue equation equals negative x squared plus 300x. Now we're going to differentiate the revenue function and determine for what values the derivative of revenue equals 0. Okay. So we've got a revenue equation. We're going to take the derivative. That's going to be negative 2x plus 300. We'll set it equal to 0. We'll solve it for x. We'll get that x is 150. Therefore, revenue is maximized when x equals 150. And we can verify this by looking at the graph. There it is. We just graphed our revenue function, and we see that, yep, smack dab in the middle, x is 150. Let's look at one more example in this section. We're going to look at taxes, profit, and revenue. So the demand equation for a monopolist is P equals 200 minus 3x. And the cost function is 75 plus 80x minus x squared. Now this is only valid when x is in between 0 and 40 inclusively. Determine the value of x and the corresponding price that maximize the profit. And let's suppose that the government imposes a tax on the monopolist of $4 per unit quantity produced. And now we need to determine the new price that maximizes profit. All right, so you got to do one problem, then another. First, we need to determine the profit function. We're going to do revenue minus cost. So we know our revenue and we know our cost function. So that's just going to be x times p minus our cost function, plugging all that in and simplifying, we get that the profit equation is negative 2x squared plus 120x minus 75. Now, if we want to maximize this, we know we need to take the derivative of profit, find the value of x for which it's minimized. So we take our profit equation, take the derivative, set it equal to 0, solve for x, we get that x is 30. Therefore, the profit is maximized when x is 30. Now we're going to determine the corresponding price per unit. To do this, we'll evaluate the demand equation, p, at x equal 30. So we just plug that in. We have p of x equals 200 minus 3x. Just plug in that 30, and we get that p of 30 equals 110. That means that the price per unit that maximizes profit is $110 per unit. Now, let's do the B part. For each unit sold, the manufacturer has to pay $4 to the government. In other words, 4 times X dollars are added to the cost of producing and selling X units. Oh, well, that makes it pretty easy because we're just going to plug that in. The cost function is now 75 plus 80X minus X squared plus the 4X. Simplifying that, we get negative X squared plus 84X plus 75. Repeat the whole process again for profit equals revenue minus cost. Plugging all of that in just like we did before and simplifying, we get that the profit equation is now negative 2x squared plus 116x minus 75. We need to maximize profit, so you guessed it. We're going to take the derivative. We're going to set it equal to 0. We get that the profit, I mean, we get that the derivative is negative 4x plus 116. We need to solve this for x. And we get that x is 29. Therefore, profit is maximized when x is 29. So we're going to determine the corresponding price per unit. To do this, we're just going to plop this into the demand equation for x equals 29. P of x equals 200 minus 3x. Plug in your 29. And we get that P of 29 is 113. And this means that the price per unit that maximizes profit is $113. All right, and that's all for this section. So if you have any questions, be sure and email me. And have a great day. Thank you for listening.